Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, and also thank you to FinTech Week for having us here today. It's a very, very honor. Also, uh, I think my business partner, Arthur, was also introduced already. Did she already? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, we are Arcaterra Limited, and uh, we are doing blockchain infrastructure for a very special niche, and that is the uh, construction and engineering industry. Um, now, actually, both Arthur and me, we have been uh, working in the blockchain solutions for many years, but just recently we decided to go into uh, construction and engineering niche for this Web3 project because we, we strongly believe that Hong Kong has been built on two pillars, right? Hong Kong's success has always been on finance. Uh, that's why we're here, I guess, fintech. And the other way to make big money in Hong Kong is construction. Uh, no doubt. I think actually this morning we were talking about how big is the construction industry in, in Hong Kong in total? So the Hong Kong uh, uh, construction industry is actually quite a massive industry. We're talking about $30 billion annually with a growth of 2.2% uh, annually. Solid, actually. Every single year has been 2.2%. Um, and then you can imagine with such a big amount of money spent on Hong Kong each year, how much flaws is within the budget that's actually been spent onto the market. And uh, some of these issues that we are looking at is probably delays in renovations, the uh, management of your human workforce, uh, workers, um, is it overpaid, overworked, or how everything is managed, your materials, your logistics, all these are problems that will delay the whole construction or renovation um, industry within a project, yes. Which is quite interesting because what we just heard is such a massive industry, but still, there is, I think this industry is very well known to have a lot of problems. The, and I think uh, you, you, actually, you also work in the construction industry, right? What are some common problems you, you encounter with? Is it with subcontractors or, or payments or? So, I mean, like, let's talk about uh, within the renovation industry. Small project, let's just say 2,000 square feet. We're already looking at probably about seven to eight different type of contractors coming into the same spot to work on the same thing. Just imagine one of those contractors going inside, delaying their program, or maybe having their AC units delivered a little bit late. That could push the whole date of the renovation project all the way back. Maybe two weeks, three weeks, sometimes even four months, actually. Yeah. So it's, delays is a big problem in the construction industry, but I think one of the biggest problems is we have so many parties involved. Imagine, I mean, if you build, renovate one apartment, okay then you already have probably two, three suppliers, one guy for the lighting, one guy for the paint. But imagine if you're made, you build a building like IFC in Hong Kong, International Finance Center, right? How many floors does it have? Does anybody know? I think it's well over 100 floors, right? And how many suppliers there are and how many potential problems there comes. And I think one of the main problems we're trying to tackle is actually having trust with your contractors or buyers. Um, imagine this, who owns a home right now who actually renovated their house um, with these couple years, right? There's always the problem where do I put more deposit in? How much money do I put in? Is the quotation, the numbers that's actually listed on the budgetary is what I build my trust on? Is that when you sign the contract, does it mean you're already trustworthy to the uh, buying and selling party? Well, most of the time, in order to be able to do that, you might need to go to the law firm, sign an MOU, and have the whole budget to be placed in a law firm and have them distribute it. So, so some of these common issues will make your project way beyond over budget. Yes. Yeah. So then we thought, how can we tackle this? Right? Because we just heard there's uh, always a lot of people involved, a lot of distrust involved. And actually, that's not too too much off of uh, where blockchain is coming from, right? We have a lot of people involved. We have a lot of payments involved. However, there's really no distrust, is there? Because everything is on the blockchain. Yeah, and I mean, like, the trust part is very interesting. When you know there's a third-party platform where it's entitled to the money, and through smart contract, we're able to distribute money to the contractor from the buyer based on work that's done. And the interesting part is because when work is done, when we use our smart contract, it can perfectly log in data and 
input these information where it entitles the program to distribute funds for, for the um, both parties. Yeah. Um, smart contracts, just for those of you who might not know about it, uh, I'll just very briefly introduce you. Smart contract is basically a computer code that lives and runs on the blockchain. Okay, um, it consists of a lot of if-then statements, and once they are deployed, they cannot be changed. This is where the, the trust comes from. Um, actually, in the background, you can see most of these uh, six pillars that Akatera is working on for the blockchain uh, construction industry. Actually, we only write smart contracts on number one, but actually all of the others that we're working on, also, they also consist of smart contracts. We have your supply chain management, uh, building information modeling, facility management, sustainability. Um, yeah, let's uh, very make an example for the smart contracts. How could that look like? Let's say I mentioned before, if then, right? So if the wall has been painted yellow, then the payment is going to be released to the contractor. And the interesting part is with paint itself just alone, we're looking at many different codes. Um, actually, material itself in the renovation and con uh, construction industry all have codes, which means it's very easily implemented into the blockchain and having the smart contract coding it and distributing money. Yeah. And of course, it's possible to interlink different smart contracts with each other, right? I mean, Akatera, we are really experts in coding these smart contracts. Um, it is each, each part of the smart contract can be very simple in itself, but the whole deployment can become very complex. But in order to take the simple example from just now up again, we could say, again, if the wall has been painted yellow, then the payment is triggered. But what if the payment is not yellow? Well, then the payment is not triggered, but then another smart contract could be picked up. And why would that be interesting? Well, I mean, the interesting part is because once it's not triggered, then there is a problem to be solved, as the smart contract itself will actually pay, of course, if uh, goods are delivered. But if it's not, it's a way for, let's just say, if I want to have my home uh, renovated, but I might be in Vancouver right now, let's just say, I can still be able to track my project through the system, being able to understand each material that I'm using, seeing the logistics, seeing every single part of the delivering process and uh, building process and have it all tracked. Yeah, this image shows it quite well here, I think. The blockchain, in particular the Agatera blockchain solution, it really handles who is responsible for what, at what time, when. And since it's on the blockchain, it's tempered proof, right? Like the yeah. I mean, because uh, usually in the construction industry, we have a lot of opposing interests, uh, rights and obligations, but all this has been handled by the blockchain. But also we have to come back, that's why it's so important in the beginning when you code the smart contracts, that you go into all the details, because again, once the smart contract has been deployed, it cannot be changed anymore. Yes, correct. Yeah. How much time do we have left? Sorry. Are we still good? Where's so the um, I'll talk a little bit more about trust between uh, contractors and buyers, uh, which is a big problem uh, within the industry. Um, so for us to actually uh, create this program where we actually could put funds and distribute funds to both buyers and sellers, the trust is actually invisibly created. And with that said, because the smart contract deploys the payments towards the, um, the seller, there would be less arguments in when they determine the work that is done because it's already stated within the smart contract. Yes. And obviously, as we mentioned before, these smart contracts are not only here for the payments themselves, but they also very closely interlink with the uh, other issues that I mentioned before. It could be the supply chain management, yeah, we can, we can definitely set out in the smart contract and also on the blockchain infrastructure uh, what material we need, when we need the material. Yeah. Actually, there is something called BIM for uh, if anybody from the construction industry. Now, BIM, Building Information Management, was originally supposed 
to bring uh, to tackle all these problems, right? So to bring the both parties together who maybe have opposing interests. But with BIM came up a new problem because BIM is basically a, a software which is supposed to handle these problems. But who takes care of the BIM? Is it a buyer side? Is it a, the, the supplier side? Yeah, and where is it based? Is it on, based on a server on the contractor side? So actually, neat solution, but just creating new problems. But we can actually put all the informations from the BIM informa uh, from the building information management onto the Akatera blockchain. Hence, taking the advantages from something very existing right now and making it safe and future-proof. I think we, we went through uh, the presentation. Is there any, any questions or we, we welcome you to, to, to push them up now. Otherwise, um, I think we're okay to hand over to the next speaker. Thank you so much for your time today. It was an honor to be here. And if you want to contact us, let me just quickly scroll through here. I would have loved to talk more, but sorry about that. We only had 10 minutes. Uh, there we go. Uh, here we are. You can contact us on Arcaterra.com, and of course, we are on Twitter as well, Arcaterra LTD. It's the same handle for Telegram. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.